Good morning, the Lord be with you. And also with you. My name is Pastor Ian McWinney, and on behalf of Samantha Black, uh, we want to uh, welcome you to our worship service this morning here at Glenbrook uh, Presbyterian Church. We're glad that uh, you are with us. Sam, I'm glad that you are with us oh, uh, this too. morning. It's me great too. To <laughs> it's, it's great to have you uh, with us and, and uh, in presence. In here. presence, there exactly. There you go. So thank you so much, and it's, <laughs> uh, thank you for just being a part of, part of this as well. Um, and we want to welcome everybody. Uh, to our service this morning once again. Uh, if it's Sunday morning or maybe uh, during the week uh, you're able to watch and, and to uh, join us in worship, we gladly uh, have you along and, and it's great to have you with us. So blessings upon you. I want to extend my thanks and, and our thanks mm -hmm. uh, to the congregation. This is our annual general meeting Sunday and I, I want to first of all just extend my thanks and our thanks to you as a congregation in your faithful stewardship over 2021. It at times was a difficult year yeah. in, in a lot of respects, pivoting back and forth between in-person and uh, uh, virtual services, some of the things that we weren't able to do over 2021 in terms of a congregation and fellowship and being together and some mm -hmm. events. But wow, uh, God has been good and uh, we have been blessed um, by God and through your generous offering. So once again, thank you so much for that. And uh, our annual, uh, annual general meeting will speak to that, but at mm -hmm. the same time, we'll also uh, continue to a uh, fellowship together during that time on Zoom. And we will also take a look at our, um, our, our message and our mission as we go into uh, 2022. So, Absolutely. And we really encourage you to join um, also when you're reviewing the reports if you have questions if you need a clarification on something this is the time to bring it up so that we can discuss it and be transparent and just so we all know where we're going into 2022 so if you did not receive that zoom link please let me know I would be very happy to resend it to you and if you did not receive your copy of the annual general report once again, please let me know and I'll make sure I get that to you before the meeting. I will be sharing it on the screen anyway so that all of us can, can see it while we're meeting. Um, but if you'd also like a hard copy, like I kind of prefer a hard copy yeah. when I'm going through yeah. things. Sometimes to make notes on Yeah, that. to That's make right. notes. If, if you would prefer a hard copy, I will have that ready for you. I can either drop it off, I can... Uh, arrange a time where we can we can do a pickup but uh, whatever is easiest for you please let me know we are just very happy to see you in a few hours uh, and discuss the future that God is holding for this church for our church <laughs> Yes. Uh, once again, uh, thank you. And thank you to Sam, too, for pulling and coll collating the, the report <laughs> and putting it together, uh, both digitally and also in hard copies as well, too. So thank you, Sam. Oh, it was a pleasure. Um, next Sunday is Communion Sunday. I just want to remind everyone to, um, over the week, uh, to gather the elements of, of wine, grape juice, uh, bread, or, or a, a gluten-free cracker, and join us next Sunday uh, for our communion here at uh, Glenbrook service. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Sam, for a couple more announcements. Thank you, Pastor Ian. Uh, just so you guys know, our regathering team did meet last week, um, and while restrictions are easing in Ontario right now, we're just going to take it a little bit slow. So we're going to continue doing online services for the month of February, and then we're looking into March as a soft opening to, to resume in person. But we will give you more exact dates as we're more confident. But just so you guys know, the update right now is we are sticking online for the month of February. Uh, and hopefully by March, the weather might you know, be a little nicer a little as bit well. Nicer and, Numbers will go down. We're just yeah. trying to make sure everyone is safe and uh, secure, you know? Yeah. So we're really appreciative of the regathering team for their wisdom and for their experience and for their honesty uh, in, in helping us figure out what to do yeah, going next. back and forth. It's, it's been a journey. Yeah. Uh, next, I just wanted to remind everyone, if you're looking for uh, studies, media, uh, movies, books, uh, anything like that, as Glenbrook adherents or watchers, you don't even need to be like a full member at Glenbrook. If you are really looking for that Christian material and it's, it's just kind of lacking in your life, please let me know because we have uh, purchased a subscription to Right Now Media and 
that means it's completely free for every single person in our congregation. So you get unlimited access, your own account. Um, it, it's just been a time right now when, it, you know, you can't connect as much. So I've personally found it really helpful yeah. to have all of this at my fingertips. Yeah. Um, and also, like, if I miss a Bible study, I can watch the video myself and I'm that's right. not behind. Yeah, that's right. Catch up if you want. Exactly, well. which yeah. has just been great. Uh, and on that, if, if you're feeling a little bit isolated right now, um, maybe lonely, I know it's kind of that lull after Christmas and New Year, but before uh, Easter and everything, please give us a call or, or let us know. Um, Pastor Ian and I are here for you. We would love to chat either over the phone. Uh, maybe if it's nice outside, we could do like an outdoor hello, uh, maybe a Zoom meeting. We would just love to hear from you and uh, to pray for you and to pray with you. That is what we're here for. Um, and we just, we want to share that with you. We, we love you guys and we want to support you. Uh, that's all I have for today, Pastor Ian. Thanks, Samantha. As a congregation, we are engaged in uh, local mission uh, through the Open Door, Eden Food for Change, uh, the Dam. We, those are some of the, the, the missions, the local agencies that we, we support. Um, we also are a part of a larger denomination, uh, uh, and we follow uh, within the Presbyterian Church of Canada and some of their mission projects. And we know uh, everything from uh, seminaries and uh, to missionaries, uh, Bible translation, mm -hmm. to indigenous uh, congregations, and uh, to uh, projects that are going on within uh, our own country, but also around the world. And so on this Sunday, where we're going to be taking a look at Jesus' call to, to Peter in particular to follow the rest of the disciples and follow and participate in his mission, I thought we would open our service just with a, a, a brief video from Presbyterian sharing and giving us a feel, a sense of what the larger Presbyterian church in Canada is doing in terms of its call and its message and its mission in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. When God's people work together, small actions have the potential to grow into something bigger than we can imagine. We are the Presbyterian Church in Canada. We worship in over 800 communities and partner in ministry in over 31 countries, sharing God's love across Canada and throughout the world. Presbyterians Sharing funds the overall mission and ministry we do together. Presbyterian World Service and Development is our international development and relief agency. Together, we live out the gospel message in word and action. Empowered by the Spirit, we revitalize churches and support innovative worship. We empower young people to grow in their faith and prepare leaders to serve the church we help congregations sponsor refugees and care for displaced people around the world. We provide relief in emergencies and promote access to food, education, and health care for all. We care for God's creation and advocate for human rights. We walk with Indigenous peoples on a journey of healing and reconciliation. We work with international partners in leadership development, Christian education, and evangelism. The ministry of Christ through the Presbyterian Church in Canada is alive and growing. We are called to love and serve one another. Together, we are making a difference. Together, we are the Presbyterian Church in Canada. Friends, even though we have, are separated from each other at this time of worship, let us come to worship uh, through the power of the Spirit um, as we begin our service today uh, through the responsive call to worship. So let's join together and say responsively. We gather today to worship together in God's presence. Praise be to God. For God has created the world and has called it good. Praise be to God. In Christ, God has redeemed the world and defeated the powers of death. Praise be to God. The Holy Spirit is at work in the world, calling us to follow Jesus. All praise and glory to God, Holy One, 
and holy three. Friends, let's join together as we sing uh, our opening uh, worship songs. You are worthy of my praise and beautiful one. Oh, 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 oh,
At this time, let's join together and bow our heads in our opening prayer of adoration and confession. Let us join together and pray. Beautiful one, source of life and spirit of love, as we gather online this morning, we ask that you would draw us together through the love and power of your Holy Spirit in worship, praise, and prayer. Your presence is peace when we are anxious. Your word is truth when we face deception. Your spirit offers calm when we are paralyzed by fear. You give us this praying community here at Glenbrook as a way to show your love for each other and for this world in which we live. So Lord God, draw near to us once again. Strengthen, fill, and lead us as only you can do. Our merciful God, you call us to fullness of life, but we confess our shortcomings. We have at times felt that we are unworthy of being called your beloved, your disciples, your followers, because we know full well those areas of our lives in which we have fallen short and failed. We have wandered from your ways and wasted your gifts. We have doubted your providence and goodness in our lives. We have closed our eyes to the grace that is at work within us. And yet, in your mercy, you do not give up on us and give us the courage to see clearly who and what we are. With your forgiveness, Lord, cleanse us from all our faults and failings and inspire us to follow and live in a new way. This we pray, saying together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And my friends, God is compassionate and he is gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us. So let's rejoice that God has forgiven you and opens a new future this day. So let us celebrate this together as we join in with our Glenbrook worship team in singing our next song of praise, You Are Merciful to Me.
reading is from Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 8. A vision of God in the temple. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The second reading is from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Jesus calls the first disciples. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out in the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so they they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, as the title of that video announces, we have been taking a look over the past uh, several weeks about the message and the mission of Jesus, particularly found in the Gospel 
of Luke. And I hope that you have been enjoying it as we have been exploring uh, the early life and ministry of Jesus and how it applies in some fashion to our own life as individuals and also as a congregation. Today we're going to take a look at a, a wonderful episode of an encounter of Jesus uh, with uh, Simon Peter and, their, and Jesus' call to ministry to Simon Peter on the beach at Capernaum. But before we begin, let us bow in a word of prayer. Let us pray. God of light and of life, we turn to your word for guidance and for inspiration week after week. Send your Holy Spirit to move in and among us this day. As we have heard the scriptures read and now interpreted, help us to hear your challenge and your promise and to respond with our commitment to follow Jesus. In his name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Anybody can have a bad fishing day. In a former pastoral charge in Jarvis, Ontario, there was a guy who I'd come to know in the congregation, associated with their congregation, who loved fishing. Jim had a fully rigged out sports fishing boat with a significant mercury outboard motor and all the tech, all the GPS that could help him find and catch fish. Now during my time as a pastor, Jim invited me to go fishing with him at least on two occasions. And on both occasions, we caught absolutely nothing. Zilch, zero, nada, nothing. The first time, I think Jim was disappointed. Because if anything, he was hoping and he was wanting uh, me to experience the thrill of catching some fish. Bass, maybe even a lake trout, particularly in Lake Erie. But as he said, anybody can have a bad fishing day. But the second time, I think Jim was more disappointed with himself. He was skillful at sports fishing. He was good at it. He had the knowledge, the equipment, and the experience. He didn't expect to come up empty a second time, and even with a pastor on board. Maybe I was going to be somehow good luck for him in catching fish. Jim and I had a good relationship, and looking back, I sometimes wonder why he didn't ask me to go fishing for a third time. Our scripture reading from Luke's gospel begins with a bad fishing day. Luke says that on one occasion, Jesus was teaching on the shore near Capernaum, which was known as a small fishing town on the shores of Lake Gennesaret, or also known as the Sea of Galilee. Jesus' popularity had grown in recent days, and no wonder we have seen him and his exorcism in the synagogue and Capernaum and uh, the healing of Peter's, uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Word spread about who Jesus was, and this was evidenced in the crowd that had grown bigger and big, bigger that day as Jesus was teaching, and there was simply no room on the shore. And so Jesus, as Luke says, improvised. With some resourceful thinking, he saw a couple of fishing boats, and he asked Simon Peter, obviously, who maybe he knew from beforehand, but he asked Simon Peter, can I borrow one of your boats? So Simon Peter said, that's a, not a problem. And so Jesus took one of the boats and he pushed out from the shore. And as we know, and the geography of that place was that the inlet sort of formed a natural amphitheater so that everyone could hear Jesus teaching and preaching. Everybody could listen and hear as he was out off and sitting in the boat, teaching and preaching uh, off in, and sitting in the boat at that point. Now, so, what happens is that Jesus borrows Simon's fishing boat, and once he's done uh, preaching and teaching, he is not finished necessarily with the boat or even with Simon Peter himself. Luke says that Jesus came up with a strange idea. Jesus says to Simon Peter, push out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Now, Simon, the experienced fisherman that he was, I think tried to be polite in his answer 
to this carpenter's son, to this itinerant preacher, whom he'd come to know perhaps a little bit, even in uh, Jesus' uh, experience um, in Capernaum in recent days. Simon says to Jesus, well, you know, Master, we've been out the whole night. We've been out the whole night and we've caught nothing. Now, he didn't add, and he was probably thinking to himself, you know, <laughs> this Jesus, this, this guy doesn't realize that no one goes deep sea fishing in broad daylight here, around here at all. And, and, and I'm not about to come up empty for a second time. Now, sometimes we can, uh, and sometimes we know that we can spend time and energy and resources on work or maybe in a relationship or on some project, maybe even in ministry, in the church. And sometimes we know the frustration and the disappointment when we put all that time and effort and prayer into something and we, we come up empty. We don't always maybe get the results that we are hoping for. Things don't always work out the way that we anticipate. And I think experience tells us that this is normal. We're not always successful all of the time. And I think common sense tells us also, yeah, okay, there's going to be another day. You know, Master, we've been out all night. Jesus, we've been out all night and we have caught nothing. But here is maybe where God interrupts our normal routine of things, and we sense that we are being asked to trust God, trust Christ, with something that's perhaps a little strange. Now, it might not be uh, going deep sea fishing on the Sea of Galilee in broad daylight. However, it might be where we work or live or in the classroom or the hospital, the office, the neighborhood, yes, even our congregation in the church that we have a strange request or what I would call a leading of the Holy Spirit from God that comes our way. Last year I was in the hospital visiting someone in the congregation who was going through some medical tests. He had struck up a, conver- a, a, a relationship and a, a, with his roommate, his hospital roommate. And as I was visiting uh, this man, he suggested to me, he said, Ian, why don't you pray? Can you pray for my roommate? If it's okay, can we pray for him? Because we need to know, and he just realized that he has a recent cancer diagnosis. It was something a little different. It, it was something a little bit out of the ordinary in terms of even me not praying for somebody in my own congregation that I would do, but praying for someone who was a complete stranger. Yet something told me to pray for this man as well. And so I did. I asked him, I said, would you like me to pray for you? And this man agreed. Nothing dramatic happened. But perhaps this unexpected prayer that day in that hospital room spoke into that man's life. And whether he believed in the prayer or not, that wasn't up to me but that somehow God's care and love and compassion touched that man's heart in a particular way. In many ways, this is, I believe, how God comes to us through the Spirit, leads us sometimes in unanticipated and unexpected ways. Simon Peter, push out into the deep water and let your nets out for a catch. Now, back specifically to Luke's story, Simon hearing this and knowing that he had failed to catch anything through the night, he had tried his own tried and true methods. He knew and he was bringing all of his fishing experience to bear, but yet he is staring at an empty net and he knows he has a choice. Do I listen to what Jesus is telling me to do, to go out in broad daylight and to cast my my nets out for a catch? Or do I pack it in for another day? Well, Simon chooses to trust Jesus at his word. He says that. He says, at your word, I will let down my nets. At your word is an important phrase in Luke's gospel, as we've been finding out. For we remember, even from last week, it was Jesus' word, his authority, his power, that carries with it the, the opportunity for miracle, for exorcism, for healing, 
for those who are coming to Jesus wanting and knowing and needing compassion and grace. And remember, Simon himself witnessed uh, Jesus' words in healing of his mother-in-law. So Simon is saying, at your word, Lord, okay, I will, I will let down my nets. There was a precedent. And he was working through, we can maybe even tell, the wheels were turning in his own mind. He's working through his own experience, his own, his own doubts. Do I trust? Do I obey? Perhaps even a little bit of skepticism. Okay, Jesus, all right, at your word, I will let down the nets. And of course, we know it is a change, it is a choice that will change Simon's whole life. We know what happens. As Luke says, there was a huge catch. I don't even know if that can describe uh, the, the way that, this, that Luke wants us to understand this. It was just a huge catch, a miraculous catch, so much so that it became a struggle just to get the boats back to land before they sank under the great weight. There is excitement and joy. They were like, those, fish, those experienced fishermen were like, like little kids who, who had caught their first fish. It was both exhilarating and terrifying at the same time. But then Luke very well does and, and expresses it in this way. There's almost a, a change in mood. There's a profound awe that takes over Peter. It's a moment of epiphany. As he was looking at this great catch, this miraculous catch, he didn't say, wow, Lord, this is amazing. He didn't say, you know, why didn't I know where to fish? I should have known better. Maybe I, I, I should have known better where to fish. No, Luke writes these words. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at his knees saying, go away from me, Lord. For I am a sinful man. If Jesus' request was strange, what about Simon's response? Go away from me, Lord. Leave me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Perhaps it was that Simon not only saw the great catch, he sees himself out of his league. But Simon realizes that he is in the presence of someone more than simply a great teacher or a great prophet. But he is in the presence of the Holy One, the Anointed One, as he says, Lord. In many ways, it echoes even the call of Isaiah that we read earlier in the service today as well. It echoes the call to Isaiah who when allowed a glimpse of the vision of God's holiness, not only, reveal, not only revealing God's light and purity, but also for Isaiah, it reveals his own human failure and sin. In so many ways, he says this, Woe of me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Sometimes when you're looking at your own face in the bathroom mirror, dim lighting is a gift, isn't it? But perhaps every once in a while your face is illumined by that LED bright bulb and there is no denying or missing the wrinkles, the blemishes, the, the age spots, the graying beard, <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm getting at. In the light of holiness, there is no hiding. There is no missing the wrinkles on one's soul. The marks that are led by our missteps and even our past failures. Coming face to face with holiness does that to a person. Now in Luke chapter 5, there is no vis vision of holiness like Isaiah saw in Isaiah chapter 6. But when Simon saw the biggest catch of his life, it was a profound moment. It was a moment of awe. It was a moment of epiphany. 
Granted, a cynic might explain it away as simply a stroke of luck. A a random school of fish just happened to find its way into its nets. Um, These things sort of happen. Even rotten fishermen strike it right now and then. And yet Simon realized that there was something more in whose presence he was in and even who he was. It was both terrific and terrifying at the same time. Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Leave me, I I am not worthy. And who really is? Who really is? The miracle of this story, yes, is about a huge catch of fish when it wasn't supposed to happen. But perhaps even more, it is about Simon and about how Jesus didn't grant Simon's prayer. Have you ever thought about it that way? And Jesus gives Simon another chance, another choice. Luke says it in this way. Then Jesus says to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching not fish, but people. And when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. They followed Him. The choice to believe, the choice to trust and to follow comes to us at times when and where we least expect it. Isn't that true? Where we've failed, where we feel over our heads, where we feel uncomfortable, where we sense our own futility, Yes, even when we feel unworthy, when we have come up empty, maybe not once, not twice, but more than we often admit to ourselves. Jesus does not typically walk into our lives when we feel in control or when we are flush with our own success. It is into our places of vulnerability and, yes, confusion. It is into those places of failure and of sin. And he likes to get us out there into the deep water in even broad daylight where we maybe feel a little silly and a little strange. Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Leave me alone. Uh, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful woman. Leave, Leave me alone. For Jesus, that was the only resume that he needed to hear from Peter. It was the only resume that he needed to hear to call Simon to believe and to follow him and to participate in his mission. It wasn't Simon's skill necessarily. It wasn't his experience or his education or his politics, not his social status. It was Simon's heart that, and, and Simon's life that Jesus was looking to catch, looking to hook, to use an analogy, a metaphor, for the sake of God's kingdom. Do not be afraid, Simon. Do not be afraid, friends. From now on, you will be catching people. As a point of application, I believe that all of us are in this story. Perhaps maybe we are like Simon, Simon Peter, in the light of God's grace and in the light of God's holiness. Sometimes we maybe come and we feel like failures. We we are those who see and know the wrinkles on our own soul when exposed to the holiness of God. We know our sins. But as we know, Jesus, as He says, did not come to call the righteous, but comes to call the sinners to follow. And as we fall before Him in repentance, as we fall before Him in confession, He raises us up in mercy and calls us to follow me. That's the miracle in so many ways of this story. And as we know, later on, Simon himself 
would have both moments of blunder and of brilliance. And eventually he would follow Jesus and eventually he would give his life for the sake of the call and for the sake of following Jesus. It was a good choice that Peter made that day. But it started out, as we know, as a bad fishing day. You might say to me, even as another point of application, well, Pastor Ian, I want to follow Jesus, but does this mean that I have to leave my vocation behind? There are some who have done just this. There have been pastors and priests and missionaries and and others who have left behind what they have been doing and to go into full-time service and ministry following the call of Jesus in their life. And we know this even uh, through our experience here at Glenbrook with some of the students that we have, that we have been able to uh, be a part of and, be, and, and, and minister to, and, and they've ministered to us in our, our fellowship here at Glenbrook. But I would also say this. I would say that there were also not just those like Simon Peter on that shoreline. There were others on that shoreline who were watching this all unfold before them. And I wonder, what was going through their minds as they were watching uh, Jesus and the disciples going out and the miraculous catch of fish and then big Peter uh, bowing and getting to the, uh, falling at the feet of Jesus and then being raised up? I wonder what went through their mind. I wonder what they saw. Uh, what were they going to do with what they saw and what was taking place? And what would they do with Jesus? In many ways, we too are a part of this scene. We too are called to follow the risen Christ today. And we are called to share the love of Jesus. It might be, as I said, in a hospital room. It might be in a school. It might be in our workplace, the marketplace, in our neighborhood, in our church community. And yes, even on a fishing boat on Lake Erie. What are you going to do with Jesus? There's a choice that we all have to make to believe and to follow and to know that our life will never be the same. A few years ago now, Jim's widow called me and let me know that Jim had passed. And in the process of our telephone conversation, we were going through some memories. She wanted me to know that Jim had never forgot those times that we had gone fishing on Lake Erie. And after that phone call, and even to this day, I've always wondered, and I thought this, perhaps, you know what, it wasn't such a bad fishing day after all. Thanks be to God. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Gracious God, I know that there are those who are listening this morning. And perhaps they feel like Peter did. They feel unworthy. They feel as if um, that what they have to offer somehow doesn't add up to much. God, we come before you, all of us, with our, our failures, our sins, but we thank you for the fact of this great grace within this story, that as we fall at your feet, you raise us up and you call us as your beloved, as your disciples, to follow you and to participate in your kingdom of love and of grace and of compassion. And so, God, if there are those here this morning who have listened to this message, I pray that you would touch their hearts through the Holy Spirit and they would be encouraged to hear your call and to follow. In the name of Christ, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, let us join together in our prayer of God's family as we pray for our world and our community and and for those within our own uh, congregation uh, who we care about and love and we want to support and pray for uh, this morning. So let us pray. Holy God, Lord of heaven and earth, in you we live and we move and we have our being. 
We are those who come aware that you call us to believe in yourself and in your mission and to follow where you lead. We thank you for Jesus, for he has revealed your gracious and good purposes for our lives and for our world, that everyone would know you as Lord. We are sometimes amazed that you would call us to participate in this great story of your salvation, and we realize that it is through the power of your Spirit that we are made alive to share your love, your compassion, and your grace. We thank you that you have been faithful in times of trial and of hardship, that you have brought us through many crises and challenge. We have found the courage to keep the faith, to be resilient, to persevere in the face of suffering because you have provided your help, your strength, and your peace. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that comforts us in our uncertainty and our anxiety and continues to prompt us to action, sometimes when even our own commitment wanes, when it feels like we have come to the end of our own resources, when we've come up empty. We ask that you would replenish us with the energy of your Holy Spirit so that we know that you are there for us and with us. Lord, we ask that you would hear us as we pray for our world. These are still strange days in which the pandemic is still with us, and while there seems to be relief in various forms, we are still aware of the challenges and the divisions and the hardships that it presents. As we witness the gathering of nations for the Olympic Games, we are also aware of the politics of human rights and of the rumors of war. So once again, we pray for diplomacy and for peaceful resolution. Hear us as we pray for those decisions that are being still made by our medical leaders in our country and around the world. God, we give you thanks for those who continue to serve others on the front lines of hospitals and of other health care facilities. We also want to pray for those who are managing difficult times, whether it is a depression and me mental illness, those who are facing struggles and sorrows as this pandemic stretches on. Remind us that we belong to each other and to you and help us to respond to one another with compassion and kindness. Finally, in silence, we bring to you the prayers of our own hearts. We pray for those who are grieving. We pray for those who are waiting for a medical test result. We pray for those who are managing a disease. We pray for also those who are caregivers and having to make decisions for those in their lives and for those who are vulnerable. Our gracious God, we thank you for our community of faith here at Glenbrook, and we give you thanks for your provision and your faithfulness over the past year of 2021. And as we join together in our AGM later today, we thank you that we can continue to rely on your faithfulness in all of your ways, in all of your goodness and in all of your providence. And God, we thank you too that we can be faithful and also effective disciples in and through your power working in and through us by your Holy Spirit. So we thank you this day. We thank you for hearing the prayers of every heart. We thank you that you have come to us, Lord God, in Jesus Christ. And because you have come to us in Jesus, we continue to listen to His voice, His Word, and we are set free to follow Him and to never be the same. In His name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. In the light of that prayer, let us join together as God's people as we sing our concluding hymn. Will you come and follow me? The words of Jesus to his disciples then and to us today.
My friends, on behalf of Pastor Ian and myself, we just wanted to express how grateful we are to have such a wonderful community in Christ where we can come together and meditate on and learn and just receive God's word uh, and celebrate that fact. And I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've found in the past two years uh, being stuck at home or being stuck uh, in one place, it's been a struggle for me to, to think of like, God, how can I serve you? Why me? Like, how can you call me to do anything? I'm, I'm stuck here. But I just thank you, Pastor Ian. We've been really inspired today to see it doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter um, the position you're in. God will call you and uh, he can use you in any position that you are in life. So thank you for that. And I I hope that these words have blessed you and that you can take them into the week and bless others as well. Thank you, Sam. Well said. Let's join together as we hear our benediction this morning. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Take care. Good to see you. Take care, all. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.